Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. All right, let's see how you did on our uh, performance task for rolled oats. Remember, you your job is to try and design a box, a shipping container that will ship six uh, boxes or uh, containers, I guess, of, of rolled oats um, using the least amount of cardboard. And it had to be a rectangular prism. So knowing that each one of these uh, boxes or containers, whatever you want to call the cylinders of Quaker oats or actually rolled oats, uh, is uh, five inches in diameter and nine and a half inches tall, then there are certain different configurations that we can make. Uh, one of them, you would have uh, possibly put uh, three in the front and three in the back, and you, when you box them in, since the diameter of the uh, of these cylinders is five centimeters, then it would be 15, no, did I say centimeters? I mean inches. Um, it'd be three of those makes 15 inches, and then two deep makes 10 inches. And then the height is 9.5. Now, I had suggested that maybe some of you might want to make the height 10, which would make your calculations a little bit easier. Um, the end result is going to be the same um, as far as the configurations go and which one gives you the, the smallest surface area. But if you chose 9.5 instead of 10 inches for the height of the boxes, um, then your surface area is going to be just a little bit more than mine. But you should be able to see the work that I did and apply it to the work that you have done. So let's just take a look and see what is the surface area of this box where they're configured three in front and three in the back. Um, we've got uh, two faces that are nine and a half by 15. That would be the front and the back. And when you combine those, that's 285 total square inches. You got two faces that are 10 by 15. That would be the top and the bottom. And those end up being a total of 300 square inches. And then you've got two sides, the right and the left. That would be 10 by 9.5. And that adds up to 190. So the surface area of this configuration is 775 square inches. When you multiply all three of those dimensions together, remember the base area. This is the basic formula. Take the base area, multiply it times the height. Well, the base area would be your 10 by 15 side, and then multiply that times the height, you get 1,425 cubic inches. Okay, so keep that in mind. Our job is not to find the one with the least volume, the one with the least surface area. Changing my configuration so that uh, you've got six of them in a row, and they're only uh, one deep you get um, six times five inch diameter should be 30 inches in this direction, five inches in that direction, and the height is 9.5. So I've got the front and the back are 9.5 by 30. The top and the bottom are five by 30s. And the sides, the right side and the left side are five by 9.5. So this box has a uh, total surface area of 965 square inches. So this would not be the one to recommend because it's already more than the previous one that was designed. Uh, when you multiply base area times the height, we got 1,425 cubic inches, just like on the previous one. That's interesting. Now, if we go with this configuration where they're three deep, but they're stacked on, or I'm sorry, three uh, in a row, but stacked uh, three on top of the other three, so they only go uh, one deep, and that means that they're 15 inches wide for this box and 19 inches tall, since 9.5 times 2 is 19 inches. And then the depth would just be, since it's only one uh, container deep, it would be 5 inches. So we've got two of the fronts, which are, uh, no, what did I do here? I think I did them out of order. This would be the front right here, the 15 by 19. So you get two of them. You've got, uh, this would be the top and the bottom, the five by 15s, and then the right and the left would be the two that are five by 19. So when you add all those together, you get 910, which is less than the second configuration, but still more than the initial one that I had uh, designed. So far, the first one is the winner. Now, what was the volume of this one? Huh, same exact volume as the others. And you know, the more that I think about it, 
the more it makes sense because every one of these boxes is going to contain the same number of these cylindrical containers of rolled oats. So the volume of one of them is the same as all the rest of them, and every one of these cardboard boxes we're designing are meant to hold six of them. So the volume, I guess, shouldn't be changing in any of these, should it? While the surface area is. Um, so I'm gonna, I, I found one more configuration, and I, yeah, there's no way that's gonna work. I mean, there's a reason why when you see boxes that are shipped, they don't look long like this unless they have to be long like this. Like for instance, if you were shipping uh, skis, you'd probably want a box like this. If you were shipping golf clubs, you'd want to have a box like this. Uh, but I can't think of any other situation where it would be better to have a big long box like this instead of a smaller compacted box like this. So what was our surface area here? Uh, it turns out I put it sideways so I could fit it on the screen better, but you got six of these, so six times 9.5 is 57, and then you've got your diameter, so this ends up being a five by five square on the right and the left. So we've got four faces, the top, bottom, front, and back are all five by 57, and then the right and the left side here are five by 25s. So that has a total surface area of 1,190 square inches, and once again, the, the volume isn't changing. It's 1425 cubic inches. So what do we learn from this? Well, when you're working with rectangular prisms, the closer your prism gets to the shape of a cube, the lower the surface, the, the surface area. When we started stretching it out a little bit more, that's where we needed uh, more cardboard. It had the higher surface area. Uh, this one was more than this one. I don't know that this is more closer to a cube, but um, it's certainly more compact and less spread out than these guys here and here. So that was the rolled oats task. Um, hopefully you are uh, feeling good about how to uh, find surface area and volume of rectangular prisms. This is something we've been doing pretty much since sixth grade, so you shouldn't have had too much trouble with that. But the bigger idea is, you know, that relationship where when you change the dimensions, you change the surface area, but not necessarily the volume for these boxes. All right, good job on that. Uh, tomorrow we are going to do a study guide, and then on Friday is the chapter test. All right, take care. Hey, feeling good, like I should. Winning dirt, walk around the neighborhood. Feeling blessed.